When you go out and film yourself hitting, do you know what to look for on your forehand so that you can hit the best forehands possible? Well, you're about to find out. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you the six forehand checkpoints. These are places in the swing where if you go out and film yourself, for instance, and you look at the footage of you hitting forehands, you know what to look for in certain moments in the swing. A lot of people, they go out and film themselves and they review the footage, they don't know what to look for. So I'm gonna teach you what, what to look for in six simple positions on the forehand. So I've got the Topspin Pro. If you haven't gotten one of these already, you need to. I promise you are gonna love it for at home and on court training. And if you have this, then you can practice what you learn in this video. All right, my affiliate link, by the way, is in the description below for the Topspin Pro. All right, six forehand checkpoints. Checkpoint number one is the ready position. Checkpoint number two, the unit turn. Three is the drop. Four is the contact. Five is the extension. And six is the finish. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go over each one quickly. The ready position. Yes, you should be athletic and on the balls of your feet, split stepping as your opponent hits the ball and really the proper timing of the split step is actually be in the air as your opponent hits, so you land just after. Synchronizes your feet hitting the ground with your react time and your brain reacting to where the ball is going. Another thing you want to have in your ready position is your elbows out. You don't want to have your elbows in, you want your elbows out because the job of each checkpoint is to help the next checkpoint be correct. When you turn on your forehand, you don't want your elbow down in this position. In most cases, when recreational players turn with their elbow low and their hand above their elbow, lots of bad stuff happens. So you want your elbow up. Well, we want to start with the elbow up. I tell my students I should be able to smell their armpits, right? So when, if I can smell my students' armpits, right? That, if, I can, if their armpits stink, it means that their forehand doesn't. That's how you want to think of it. So get your elbows out away from your body. So feet moving, split step, elbows out away from your body. Make sure of that when you film yourself and you review the footage, that you're split stepping as your opponent hits the ball and that your elbows are out away from you. Checkpoint number two, the unit turn. Take the racket back with both hands. You can even practice this. Remove your hitting hand from the racket and just practice turning and taking the racket back with your off hand just as a way of understanding that the backswing is really just the body rotating to take the racket back. Have both hands on the racket. Another thing I like to have my students do is have their hitting hand, elbow, and shoulder all the same height. This helps you use a circular swing. But I was talking about the elbow position. When your elbow is the same height as your hand and your shoulder, rather than like this, you can see my racket face is open and that's when players tend to break the plane and their swing can get really big and makes it very hard for them to hit their best forehands. So because the elbows were out in the ready position, when we turn, it should be much easier to accomplish that correct elbow position in checkpoint number two. So checkpoint number two is the unit turn. We see the ball come to us and we start turning the body as a way to take the racket back. Both hands on, hand, elbow, and shoulder, hitting hand, elbow, and shoulder, all the same height. Now this is when we're gonna start probing around and getting ready to hit the ball. When we're ready to hit, we're gonna basically do three things at once. If we're gonna use a neutral stance, we're gonna step out, drop the body, and drop the racket all at the same time. It's called a three-point landing. So many pros use this technique. This is where the foot steps out, the body goes down to get under the ball, and also to use the legs to be able to explode up into contact while dropping the racket down. And you'll notice my racket is closing at this point. Now, whether you drop the racket down like Raducanu, or you drop the racket down like Del Paltro, or you drop the racket like Nadal and Fed, it doesn't matter. You need your strings to point down. When you close the racket face at this point, remember the job of each checkpoint is to help the next checkpoint be correct. When you close the racket face in checkpoint three, that allows your racket to be square against the back of the ball, spinning up the ball for topspin at checkpoint number four, the contact. So review the footage of your forehand and make sure that as your racket drops, whether you drop like Federer or you drop like Del Potro, you close the racket face. We don't want the racket on its edge in the back. Close the racket face. That is what is gonna allow you to come up to checkpoint four. Now, checkpoint four is where you make your money. This is where we're hitting the ball and we're trying to hit a great shot over the net. So a couple things. First, we want our head still. So don't be looking at where you're gonna hit. There's a, a saying in golf, if you look, you won't like what you see. So just keep your head down as you're hitting. So keep your head super still, 
you want your racket face facing your target. It's okay depending on the amount of racket speed that you have if your strings are a few degrees closed as you're hitting this ball. But the goal is to go from below the ball to above the ball, spinning the ball, which is just what sets the Top Spin Pro apart. The, the fact that you can see the ball spin, so you can see and feel top spin, confirming that you're hitting the ball correctly, getting the ball to rotate, it's just an unbelievable way, if you're a coach, to get your students to understand top spin. If you're a parent, to give your child a tremendous amount of confidence, because they can practice over and over again all those lessons that they're taking, they can practice at home the technique. That way they get better before their next lesson, rather than waiting for their next lesson to get better. Such an advantage with the Top Spin Pro. So as you're hitting the ball, you want to be going from below it to above it. Strings are facing your target, maybe even slightly closed, depending on if you can swing really fast. But here's what I really want you to focus on. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see players make with their non-hitting hand. It is vital that at contact on your top spin forehand, that your non-hitting hand is higher than contact. You do not want your non-hitting hand down. You'll watch players hit forehands and they'll hug themselves. If you're a coach, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll feed somebody the ball and they go like this. And they actually put their arms, like they're hugging themselves, like they're in a straitjacket. That's not what you want. When you're hitting the ball, you want your non-hitting hand rising as you get your racket to contact. Your non-hitting hand should be rising as you're approaching contact. It should not be falling. When it falls as you're hitting the ball, it becomes a counterweight. Racket's going forward, non-hitting arm goes back, you end up hugging yourself and you can't rotate your hips properly the way you need to in order to hit reliable topspin forehands. So as you're hitting the ball and the ball is touching your string, stop the video on your forehand and stop when your racket's at contact. And you should look like you're waving to your opponent. You'll see Djokovic is like this, you, I would love if your left hand was actually facing the opponent. This is what you see uh, Azarenka do. When she's hitting the ball, her hand is like this, like she's literally waving to her opponent. So I don't want your non-hitting hand down at contact. When you're coming up the back of the ball, strings facing forward, non-hitting hand is waving to your opponent. One way to think of this, put your hand on either side of your racket and just make this move. Learn what it's like to swing and let the racket push the left hand or the non-hitting hand out of the way. That's the feeling you want to have to make sure that your hips can twist into the shot. That's number four, checkpoint number four contact. Checkpoint five, the extension. After hitting the ball, move your racket what feels to be up toward the ceiling. Please resist the urge to move your racket left. It's so common, I hear coaches talk about this, and it absolutely kills players' ability who are learning the game, maybe to who don't have six hours a day to go out and practice. It kills their performance on their forehand because the racket goes left. I want you moving the racket the opposite direction you want the ball to spin. We want the ball to spin down, so we're gonna swing up. So after contact, extend the upward swing toward the sky, and I want you to catch the racket at this point. I want you to have the feeling like you're catching the racket while your racket is going up. Rather than having your non-hitting down, remember that hugging idea, rather than doing that, I want your non-hitting hand going up, and I want you catching with this extension. The ball goes the opposite direction you swing. You want the ball to go down, you gotta swing up. And then last is the finish. When you're done, butt cap is pointing over the net. You could look through your arms if you wanted to, but you're choosing to look over because your hips turned, chin is on your front shoulder. And by the way, the chin rotated, or the body rotated under the chin, and your head stayed very still throughout the stroke. So you, on checkpoint number two, the chin is on the front shoulder. When you're done, check, uh, in checkpoint number six, the chin is on the back shoulder. So let me hit a couple balls here, make sure you can see me in all my checkpoints. One, two, three, four, five, six. And when I'm done, I'm gonna keep looking at the Top Spin Pro. That way my head stayed still. All right, let me hit some balls on the ball machine.
So go out and film yourself hitting forehands and look to see if you're missing any of those checkpoints and add them into your forehand technique. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this!